John Hutchinson is a self-taught theoretical physicist who has discovered the key to the Bermuda Triangle phenomenon, among other things. He has been a speaker on Discovery Channel and documentaries, not that that means anything, because they produce propaganda as well. But John Hutchinson collects old surplus Navy equipment. He hooks it up and does his own experiments with it, and he's compiled quite an impressive collection. Uh, while experimenting with Tesla coils tuned to ultra-high frequencies and pointing them at different objects, uh, he was able to make them fly straight off the ground and pull metal apart like rubber spaghetti by fine-tuning the frequencies. All of the effects that John has discovered have already been known to our military since the 1930s, and I will point out one experiment in particular that was leaked accidentally. The Philadelphia experiment. There are many experiments like it done by the military, and all of them still classified as of the date of this video. During this one experiment, they placed three large Tesla coils on a destroyer, one on the bow, one on the stern, and one on the mast of the ship. They ran a large battery of tests, experimenting with different frequency ranges and recording their results. They, were f they found that in certain frequencies, the boat would lose weight. It would seem to rise up out of the water. So they did a test and tried it with men aboard. They s when they stopped to check the status of the crew, many of the men were motion sick and vomiting, and had bloodshot eyes and bleeding, and on the lower decks they found dead crew members. Some of them had their bodies melted inside the wall, literally fused inside the metal hull of the ship. Many were hemorrhaging from organs and had bloodshot eyes from ruptured blood vessels, and also had bruising on their bodies from internal bleeding due to ruptured blood vessels. Some people, including whoever censors Wikipedia, will try to argue that the Philadelphia experiments, as I am talking about, didn't happen. They refer to a different Philadelphia experiment, obviously a different one than the <coughs> real one that we all know about. I've also seen many attempts to discredit John Hutchinson and his, ex and his experiments, and I want to point out that John's experiments cannot be discredited, while his own interpretations of the phenomenon can, because he misunderstands a lot of things. Basically, this so-called Hutchinson effect and the Philadelphia experiment were experiments which discovered something called hyperatomic resonance, which causes diamagnetism. Quantum mechanics tells us that everything in the universe is a wave and thus has its own frequency. Well, let's think about the table on your, that your computer monitor sits on for one second. Is that a wave? Well, actually, it is. <laughs> the table, the board, or board that has a, has a frequency usually a couple different frequencies. The more complex the geometry of the object, the more frequencies needed to describe the object. We'll start with a simple object, like a long, flat board, and we'll compare it with a really, really long, flat board. The man holding the longer flat board will shake his much slower than the man with the shorter one. This is because the object, object's frequency along a particular axis, say the one to the length, going along the length of the board, is inversely proportional to the length of the board itself. So, the longer the board, the lower the frequency. The shorter the board, which it can effectively be thought of as a wavelength itself, the higher the frequency. And small objects require a much higher frequency than you could shake it at, so you could use a motor or a guitar string to vibrate them. I suggest you study everything you can on waves. I can't go over everything in this video because I'm going to have to show how they describe these all these different effects. So I want you to read up on waves so you can understand how the wavelength is related to the frequency, and most importantly, so you will understand resonance and base frequency, not B A S S B A S E base frequency and harmonics. Harmonics like first, second, third, and they go all the way up in music anyway until it gets too high for you to hear. Harmonics explains why a guitar's 12th fret is always at the exact halfway point between the bridge and the neck. You divide a wave in half and go up an, to go up an octave and multiply by two to go down an octave. Waves and resonance can be effectively and incredibly powerful. Take for example the Tacoma Narrows Bridge or, or Tesla's earthquake machine. At one point in his career, when uh, Tesla was poor like me, he lived in an apartment in a tall building, and he put together an 8-watt motor which vibrated a 15-pound weight back and forth at a tunable frequency. He measured the height of the building and calculated the approximate frequency, frequency of the building itself, and played around with the motor until he tuned into that frequency. Uh, the entire building began to rock back and forth with the rhythm of the 15-pound weight due to uh, what's called, he produced a standing wave 
This is the same thing that brought down the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. You can read up more on this if you want. Basically, the owner of the building called the fire department and directed them to the strange man's room where they found Tesla with his machine on the floor, uh, which they promptly smashed to pieces in a panicked effort to stop the building from collapsing. Uh, they didn't know that inversing the machine would dampen the wave fast, the standing wave faster than actually smashing it. But luckily, the building was a steel frame building, heavily redundant structure, and did not collapse. Uh, Tesla's so-called earthquake machine was simply harmonizing with the wavelength of the entire building, producing a standing wave. Um, in in the strongman competitions, there are men who can pull trains weighing 100 tons or more. Uh, since force equals mass times acceleration, and the masses of a locomotive is huge, the acceleration will be small. But acceleration is a change in velocity. So although it's small, it still changes the velocity of the train, beginning to speed it up and increase its velocity by little, little tiny bits. So after a while, you can actually get the train moving by pulling it all, like a lot. And that type of motion is a linear motion, but you can apply the same exact thing to a heavy, heavy, heavy tall building, which you you put wave motion into, and this type of this is this type of resonance. The type of resonance which causes the Hutchinson effect and related effects can be explained by looking at how the frequencies compare to the molecular and atomic structure of the material itself. This phenomenon is only observed while using ultra high frequency and incredibly high frequency Tesla waves. Why? Because they correspond to the frequency of the distance in the atoms in the structure. The distance between the atoms in a structure is equal to the wavelength, which will resonate that structure. Once you find the resonant frequency with the Tesla waves, you have effectively trapped and aligned the atoms. You can now tune the frequency a tiny bit higher, causing diamagnetism by squeezing the atoms together, restricting the electron orbits, which causes a north pole and a south pole, artificially induced to diamagnetism, which causes levitation. If you lower the frequency, it pulls the atoms apart a tiny bit, which causes a phase change of matter where a solid starts behaving like a liquid due to these strong electromagnetic forces resonating within it. This is the force that pulls aluminum bars apart and turns them into rubber spaghetti. This is the force that levitates 70-pound cannonballs. It's electromagnetic force, not a new force, nothing new. It would be scientifically possible to create a craft that could float around using this type of artificially induced diamagnetism, only it would need to be extremely lightweight and a perfect crystalline structure. Nano-engineered quasi-crystals would do the trick. <laughs> However, it cannot be used as a propulsion technology unless you can show how it vi doesn't violate conservation of momentum. So ion wind would probably be the best bet here, and I'm almost positive that this is the technology used in the rod-shaped UFOs, and I also don't see why it wouldn't be used in the sport models to give it a little extra oomph in addition to the superfluid centrifuge accelerator ring. So there you have it. I hope I explained a lot of these phenomenon for people. I expect you to have questions. I hope there's some good ones. I'd love to answer them. Uh, I'd like to see someone who has a better idea of what the, these things are than what I've just explained for you. If you think you know more than me, then you're welcome to you know, share your ideas with me. I'd love to hear them. Um, don't forget to rate five stars and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thanks.